Uh, this is a Monday morning, and uh, you know, uh, we have reports on the Vanguard, and um, this is uh, other national dealings. We are looking at uh, Tinubu appointing uh, Momo as a minister designate for Niger Delta Affairs. We are thinking he wanted to scrap that uh, ministry. I, 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 I know that it will be very difficult to talk about scrapping the Niger Delta ministry in that regard. Um, uh, it wouldn't have been a better thing to do. It would have tempted the 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 the, the, the quest for a better Niger Delta in that regard. Thank God um, uh, that has been ratified and uh, um, we are seeing it coming into fruition. Okay, let's move on. We have uh, Atiku Kwankwaso will be discussing merger to set up a formidable party to oust the uh, APC. Um, I, I think the uh, in that regard, uh, it's a development, it's a good development. Politics is all about numbers you know and uh, credibility these are people who have proven to be outstanding politically over the years but my reservation is this um the Labour party candidate who's, who who most of you see to be very outstanding and uh, i don't know how that is going to work we are still expectant that um, at the end of the day, uh, judiciary will do the next one. You understand? In regard to the 20, uh, uh, 23 presidential election, that was highly uh, um, rigged. Highly, uh, highly rigged. Highly rigged. Yes. Uh, in favor of certain interests. And the matters I'm talking to you is being challenged in the court. So, talking about uh, 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 merger now. Um, I don't want to talk about rerun. We don't believe in rerun. Um, the, the, what we believe, and we are Nigerians are asking for, is let the people's mandate that has been stolen be uh, uh, given back to them. And judiciary knows what we are talking about. We knows what Nigerians are talking about. And that was what actually prompted. In case if there's any sentiment a compromise going on within the judiciary system. The hashtag all eyes on the judiciary. Please should not be taken with just a wave of hand. Nigerians are asking for justice in that regard. Nigerians are saying that their mandate should be uh, restored. Well, if I am only looking at uh, because I know that Peter we tried to some time ago to um, talk to uh, uh, Bob yeah. and I know the uh, the kind of things Bob said uh, about possibly becoming the vice president to um, uh, uh, Peter O.P. Uh, and now is 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 falling in line with a possible merger uh, to uh, a, a, a political party. But we don't know how that political party is going to look like. Whether it's going to be under the Labour Party, which most Nigerians has come to identify with, or whether it's going to be uh, there's going to be an entirely new political party. That we don't know. But what we're saying is this: at the end of the day, between Pakwaso and Atiku, you know, um, we want to see uh, somebody that Nigerians believe in. You know, heading and winning elections in Nigeria. Okay, there might be political calculations. Uh, that's why, uh, when looking at this report, a uh, merger between the APC, sorry, the PDP, Labour Party, and NPP, does it mean that they are not still waiting for the judgment? Uh, that's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You understand? There might be certain things that, are my, that, are, that we are not seeing now. Uh, maybe in preparation for. Um, um, uh, a possible uh, uncertainty, you know. Like, let me give you a for instance. If Peter be finally, uh, uh, if they finally pronounce Peter be uh, uh, the winner of 2023 elections, you know, he's going to need these people to come together to form a formidable force, and that is the angle most Nigerians are looking at it. Not, this is not a matter of having another political party. This is a matter of, you know, competency, capacity, you know, to be able to navigate, to drive, to build, to develop Nigeria. 
you know, that's what they are talking about. It's not about uh, uh, bringing a new political party at the end of, at the, end of the day, uh, we still not get making any headway. Okay, as it stands, do you have an effective opposition currently, as it stands? We, we cannot be talking about effective opposition now currently because all opposition political parties are already in the court. You know, and uh, all, until judgment is being pronounced, that is when we we'll, we'll now say, okay, we are having APC, PDP, Labour Party as oppositions, depending on how the judgment is going to go. Okay, let's look at the junta. Uh, three years, they are giving three years. Everyone that they are going to use three years for the uh, dish out a plan to bring in a democratic government. But Okowaz is not agreeing to that uh, uh, policy. I, I I don't know what I think the whole world, you know, uh, 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 should start looking into Ecowas. The objective seems to be, you know, not in line with having civilian peace restored in Niger in, in, in the Niger Republic. Because I don't I don't see they, they should forget that they should not forget that Ecowas is just a regional block. We have the AU there. And you have come out categorically to say that they are against military invasion in Niger. Why is it that a regional bloc like ECOWAS is also uh, is making this kind of um, uh, uh, moves, you know, to destabilize a, a, a sovereign nation? Even though we know that, of course, the, the, the military rule is a bit out of fashion. But there's need for them to continue to dialogue. Like General Tian himself has said that they are open to dialogue. They are always open to dialogue. As I'm talking to you, the AU state is divided now. The Ekowa state, apart from 11 states or so, who are saying they are ready to go. Algeria is against the invasion. So many countries are coming to raise eyebrows about the motive the motive of ECOWAS to invade Niger. So, um, if they say they are, they are, they are looking at three years, don't you think it's a... It, it, my, my brother, it is not a long time in this regard. We have seen eight years of Buhari Western without achieving anything. But if they say, I think they should be given benefit of doubt. You know, because a lot of things has actually gone wrong in the civil rule that had taken place over the years you know these guys under civil rule in Niger seem to be very loyal to some certain interests in the international community that's where my next question comes in what happens to the western or uh, imperialistic interest in Niger Republic and it's, it's, my brother it, it, it has been given a, a, a deadly blow as I'm talking to you now because the issue of what is happening in Niger and of course ECOWAS state is going to be renegotiated Burkina Faso is there Guinea is there Mali is there this is will be renegotiated the, the, the years of neocolonization in this ECOWAS state is uncalled for you understand? The, the world is moving at a very fast rate now. We're getting civilized. People are getting to be aware of their rights. People are getting to be aware of some certain things, you know, and they coming to start, continue to pay allegiance to or loyalty to some certain forces in the international community. As at this moment, at this point in time, when the world is getting more civilized, is uncalled for. And that's one of the reasons where the Nigerians themselves are happy with the military leadership currently trending in Niger Republic. ECOWAS is battle ready. They're ready to invade Niger Republic. As a, it's a big problem. Why is a big problem that ECOWAS will lose? Because uh, apart from uh, the, the, the principle, the, the, the process of invading another country, which is supposed to get to the United Nations Security Council first, that has not been done unless that has been done ratified by the by, by un security council before they can say okay overwhelmingly they are going to how can the regional block we have a UDA. there there are processes the public a, is a member no, 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 I'm, no i'm saying that there are processes to that where you have to ratify that then from a you will move to a u.n security council after they have ratified it 
then that gives ECOWAS the legitimacy to invade. To invade. That has not been done. But if they feel that they can invade Niger at this point in time, they will definitely going to lose. One, Nigeria will be threatened by certain interests within ECOWAS state who sees the invasion of Niger as a threat to themselves, to them too, and their sovereignty and their businesses. Let me give you a clear example. As I'm talking to you now, there is an unconfirmed report. Unconfirmed report. Yes, let me put it that way, that as of yesterday, over thousands of Wagner mercenaries have already landed in Niger. As I'm talking to you now. And those Wagner mercenaries, uh, mercenaries are the people that fought as for, for Assad in Syria. Those ones that fought in Libya, all of them have been assembled, they are already in Niger. And these guys, Niger is a, is a very difficult terrain to fight. Niger is a difficult terrain to fight. So if Tinubu insists, if ECOWAS, yes, he's the ECOWAS chairman now, he's the, he's the one I'm referring to. ECOWAS chairman, the former president. Yeah. ECOWAS president or chairman, whoever, but we know that he's the one that moved the first motion for a possible invasion to uh, Niger. Uh, the, so he's ECOWAS president, so to say. If he insists on invading Niger, he's going to destabilize the entire northern Nigeria. And about, as I'm talking to you now, about seven or five, five to seven states of in the seven states, yeah, in the northern seven Nigeria are saying no. Because one, there seems to be a total breakdown of economic activities within that border that connects Niger and some of these states in the north. And it will, it will, one, it will bring the issue of insecurity the more in the north. You are looking at only how it affects Nigeria. You are looking at how it affects Niger Republic. No, 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 let me tell you, it has, it has already started affecting Niger Republic because of the sanctions so far. Um, they are more, Nigeria they are more, more they are suffering more. Nigeria, Nigeria has cut down uh, uh, electricity. electricity supply and there seems to be a slow influx of goods and services, food and all the rest. But to tell you that possibly Gerard Chenry knows what he's doing. He has not been able to shut down the dams in Nigeria. Please take note of that. Yeah, and the river flows uh, Yes, that. yes, he has not been able to do that. Is that means the guy, the man knows that it doesn't work like that. He's still open for dialogue. And he has been calling for dialogue. He has come to say that there are windows by which we can, uh, you know, sit down and avoid war. But if they feel they're going to break war, that it is not going to be an easy walk on the park. So you should understand that word. It is not going to be an easy walk in the park. Okay, uh, the battle, the war, there are two different. There's a difference between battle and war. Nigeria may win the battle, but not the war. Nigeria, ECOWAS, one, we not win the battle, neither will they win the war. That is my take on that, because I, I have taken time to look at the factors that have led to further push of invasion. And also look at other factors, you know, that will bring about resistance. By the time you begin to balance these two things, you discover that at the end of the day, Niger will stand to defend and resist. And, and, and if possibly, you say Niger, you just joined Russia possibly, and No, I'm not. On the side of Ecuador, we have. France, we have the United Kingdom, we have America. They have their base there in the Nigerian Republic. And you know, they have their soldiers there. And they have technology. Wagner is, uh, is an organization that uh, mercen they are mercenaries. They are not as sophisticated as France, United Kingdom, and the US. So when you are saying that Niger will win the battle, and, uh, and let me understand. No, uh, uh, where, where, where I say that is that I'm only looking at the economic aspect, the business angle of that war. Because the commercialization of that world is where I'm looking at. But when you look at the business angle and the commercialization of that world, it is going to affect the entire Western Europe. Do you know why? Russia 
Kazakhstan has cut off uranium and gas supply to Western Europe as a result of what is going on between Ukraine and, Europe, and Russia, including America. Of course, now when I said Western, West international community, Western uh, 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 countries, I mean America inclusive. Let me tell you why America is inclusive in this regard. You understand? Uh, most of their electricity is being generated based on uranium. No, the, the, where we are going to is, have they cut off supply of uranium to the United States? Oga, 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 let me explain to you. As I'm talking to you, Russia does not supply gas to America. No, uranium. And that's what I'm saying now. No, yeah, see, 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 that's what I'm saying. Uranium, 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 yeah. uranium and gas has been cut off. Only about certain percentage is being given to them. It's not holistic. And it is not enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have been economical. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm just telling you. When I said, when you are giving somebody hundred percent, eh? And you said you are giving somebody less than fifty percent. You can say that su supply cut off has been. Okay, let, let's come back. I think uh, West Africa is the battleground for the 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 the, 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 the crisis between Russia and the West. What should Africa do to liberate itself from, you know, when two elephants fight, the grass suffer. The two elephants in, in this regard, they are the Russia, Wagner, and the West. And the grass is Africa. What should the grass do at this point in time? Because looking over what is happening, we are going to suffer in Africa. Uh, okay, you don't understand what I mean by what is playing out. You are only looking at the war angle of it. It's beyond war angle. These are has to do with economic issues. It's not about war. What brought about war? What what led to the what uh, what uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia? Why did Russia have to cut off supply of uranium and gas to uh, uh, to to other other nations of the world, to the West, the Western Europe? Why? No, we need to ask. The, you understand? It's also a, it's also part of uh, of 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 disagreements. You understand, and uh, that is why the uh, Americans are putting pressure on Nigeria to push for a return of Basum, President, outstanding President Basum, because of uranium supply, and not only that, there is this. Call, this, what they call the this uh, uh, pipeline, uh, Sahara uh, 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 pi pi pipeline. The, the gas, the lead, the, the pipeline, the lady from uh, Delta, really Delta State to Niger. Niger is the only place that that pipeline has to cross. I didn't know why they reactivated it. The contract was dead before now. Do you know why the Americans reactivated it? It's because of what is on the ground. Russia might decide in terms of not to even give them a single gas. So they, re they went back and 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 uh, reactivated that business under Basum to keep polluting the 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 the, 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 the Ecuador states. I want you to understand that from that angle. By the time they start, when they, they move the pipeline out to uh, Niger, from Niger to Algeria, then when you get to Algeria, it will connect over 500 pass a pipeline from different international communities. And you see now, they will have gas. Possibly they will have uranium. So that was why they wanted President Basun to continue in office. And Russia is seeing it as a, 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 as a as a as a target, you know, to destabilize that business, and of course, you know, share Russian interest in Africa too. And that is what is going on. Do you know? Do, do you think that what happened in uh, uh, Niger uh, is just because they want to remove Basum? Basum was part of that deal, and the deal has been going on. And now the people of Niger are not even benefiting directly from uranium, the scarcest uh, raw material uh, resources in the world now. What more than billions of? Why is it like that? Okay, look at France. France has no uranium plant in. A lot of things that are supposed to be. The industries are supposed to take place as a result of the resources in Niger are being 
you know, sighted outside Niger, possibly in France, and the people are continuing to suffer. And you want that thing to continue? Why are Africans like that? They keep on asking. Look at the guy from Burkina Faso. He has come out to say it that it is high time Africa. I think he's the youngest military president in the world now. The guy from Burkina Faso. He has come out to say it that it is high time Africans will sit down and know what to do. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable, for your contribution this morning. You would like to say anything? <laughs> thank you, thank you.